All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about why you can heal yourself physically with lucid dreaming, but also with some other tools as well. And uh, this is an interesting topic. Okay, there are many people who say that you can't heal yourself with lucid dreaming or indeed with the power of your mind. And the thing I want to say about this is in a lucid dream specifically, there are many ways you can get to places, right? And sometimes some people go through a lucid dreaming portal that leads them to uh, what I call a cave of nonsense and just kind of misinformation. <clears throat> so let's just get right into it. So physically, the body is a system of structures, okay? These structures are not independent of each other. They are very much interrelated and interconnected. And before I get too much into this, I just want to quickly mention that I have a free kind of training on lucid dreaming. It'll show you my like three-step process. The link's in the description. I won't mention it anymore. Okay, so don't click away. So the first thing I want to mention is the placebo effect. So when you take something like a supplement or a even a medical treatment of some kind, right, there is what's known as the placebo effect. If you believe something will work, it will work uh, better than if you didn't believe it would work. Uh, I kind of mangled that, but but you see what I mean, right? So let's say, and this is medically proven. No one can really deny this. Okay, um, if you if you strongly believe a thing, that, and let's just call it a thing for now, will work. Your your mind will make it work better. Now, now what I find really interesting about this is that the very definition of the placebo effect is your mind, your your mental beliefs having such an impact on your physical body that it causes an effect bigger than you would get just from, you know, just doing nothing. So by definition, the placebo effect proves that your mind, your beliefs can physically alter your physical body. How else would it work, right? How else would it work? Um, so, so because that's medically proven, that is the first step that, that kind of proves already that your mind your beliefs, which some people would say are just in your mind, but they're really not, uh, has an, such a physical effect on your on your actual body that you are able to change your physical manifestation and your body. And this is, I find this really fascinating because if you acknowledge that the placebo effect is real, which of course is medically proven, uh, then by definition, you are also acknowledging that your mind is able to physically alter your body. So if that's possible, how is the idea that you can alter your physical body in a dream any different? <laughs> You're still using your mind to physically change the, the, the molecules inside your physical body. If you can do that with the placebo effect, then why on earth can't you do it with a lucid dream? And of course the answer is, well, you can do it with a lucid dream. So that's the first step. And by the way, I have kind of validated this through my own experience as well. You know, I for a long time, I've kind of held the affirmation that I don't get sick. Now, have I ever got sick in the past? Of course I have, right? But I feel like, and you know, I've been told that I heal much faster than, than you know, people would expect or that, than other people, for example. And in the last two years, I've not been sick one time, not once. And, you know, with everything that's going around, let's say, you would think that I would have got sick, but no, I have not got sick one time. And that's because I hold a very strong affirmation that sickness or disease is literally not part of my reality. I'm utilizing, maybe you could say the placebo effect, but I believe it's a bit deeper than that. I'm utilizing really my, the ability of my mind to control and um, guide my physical body. And hence I haven't got sick. So that's kind of the, the first step. The, the second one that I want to talk about is the idea of meditation. And this one is another kind of thing, another point that the skeptics, the critics cannot really argue. And because again, this has been medically proven. So if you want kind of sciencey results and sciencey proof, there is, that it exists, there is that proof. So it's been medically shown that meditation, and bear in mind that meditation is literally just, apparently, using your mind. You're not doing anything physical. You're not performing any kind of surgery on yourself. Okay, you're literally just using your mind and nothing else. Meditation has been medically proven to lengthen your telomeres. Your telomere, and by the way, this is an amazing discovery, by the way. 
that your telomeres are the kind of the protective caps on the end of your chromosomes. So when you lengthen them, you slow down the aging process. Okay, so if you imagine that when you age, your telomeres are kind of like uh, shoelaces. I'm, I'm kind of reducing it a little bit, but imagine they're kind of like shoelaces. And then when, when you age, they gradually get shorter and shorter until eventually you're not able to regenerate them and you die. Now, through meditation, you actually physically lengthen those telomeres. Now, again, if your mind cannot influence your physical body, then how is that possible? How, how, how has that been proven then? Because uh, as far as we know, or as far as the skeptics would have you believe, meditation is just purely using your mind. So how then is it possible that meditation is able to lengthen your physical telomeres, your actual chromosomes inside your body, physically? So uh, just from those two basic examples, you can see, and I wanted to start with the, the kind of things that just cannot be argued. They can't be debated or refuted because there's physical, sciencey, uh, you know, lab-based evidence that your mind through the placebo effect physically can alter and change your physical body and meditation can lengthen your telomeres. So if those things have been proven, then is it really so much of a stretch to assume that through lucid dreaming, you can do a similar sort of thing? Really? I mean, it's already been proven. Pl placebo effect and meditation, uh, which really is just another way of saying belief and focus, which is the foundation of lucid dreaming, has already been sh shown to allow you to physically heal yourself. Now, is it really so much of a stretch to think that you can practice that and use that? Not really. And then, and I find this even more interesting, you hear these stories. So that, that's the kind of like the left-brained, evidence, science-based, data-driven arguments. You can't really debate those. They, they exist. Uh, the data is out there. The studies are out there. Uh, so that kind of proves my point already. But I'm just going to go one step further and say there is also a lot of anecdotal evidence, subjective stories of people who, through the power of belief, were able to essentially reverse diagnose, like death sentences, literally. Like, there are many stories like this where you will, you'll find, like a, for example, a doctor will say to someone, uh, okay, you have like a terminal condition, you're, you've got this much time to live. The person hearing that will then kind of decide, no, that's not how it's going to be. I don't believe you and I will, that's just not, that's not how it's going to be. I don't believe that. And they literally reverse that diagnosis purely through the power of belief. And this is actually a very interesting area of study. I'm going to link to some books in the description that go more in depth on this. Uh, but one that I find particularly interesting, and I think this was mentioned in uh, The Holographic Universe. This is a book I really, I really do love, uh, which again, you can find in the description. And they studied these people who had like some kind of mental disorder. I can't remember if it was autism or uh, Asperger's or something along those lines, okay? And they found that there was an interesting data point in, in the analytics. There was an interesting bit of data. And it was that for the people who were given a like a terminal death sentence diagnosis, let's say, from a doctor, the people who had a mental condition like Asperger's or uh, autism, because they didn't mentally grasp the idea of what that meant, right? Because they because they couldn't understand as much what a terminal diagnosis really means, they had lower incidences of uh, death. So think about what this means, right? So this is, by, and I, again, I'm mangling the data. Probably, I'm probably paraphrasing it all wrong. Uh, but this is the, kind of the gist, the gist of what it said. And I'll, I'll link to the studies and things in the description. But basically what that showed is that if you mentally and subconsciously don't believe that something will happen, let's say a terminal diagnosis or really anything, then it becomes less likely to actually happen. You, your belief physically has an effect on your body. However, the opposite is also true. It has to be true. Okay, so like I said, I've not been really, I've not been sick at all for the last two years, not even a sniff. Okay, however, there are people I know who don't believe in this stuff. They don't believe that, for example, your mind can alter your physical body. And almost ironically, they seem to be sick all the time. <laughs> Literally every week, every two weeks, they seem to have a cold again or a sniff 
or a flu or a headache or anything. And it seems like it's, it's almost magically proving my point that what you believe internally is literally what you will experience physically. And, you know, I've, I've gone in different ways with this video. I've started with the logic stuff, the, stu the science, the data, and then I moved on to the kind of more subjective stuff. But yeah, I find it really interesting. Um, the power of belief is so strong. And you, that's why I always say on this channel, you need to be very careful what beliefs and thoughts you allow into your consciousness because they will become your reality. Anyway, so let me know what you think about this. Um, obviously it's a, a, not a controversial topic, but it's a, it's a debate at least. And I like to, I'd like to think that I've made my points quite clearly. Um, give me a shout if I forget to put any links in the description, by the way, because I don't know when I'm going to edit this. Okay, see you next time.